in this video we will going to see interview questions related to katia v5 so the first question generally ask what is the full form of katia or how you can expand the word katia so katia is related to like computer edit three dimensional interactive application katia can be applied to a wide variety of industries from aerospace, defense, automotive industrial equipments, high tech industry, basically related to electronics components, shipbuilding, consumer goods, plant design, consumer package goods, life science, architecture and construction, process power, and petroleum services. The next question that can be asked is what is the extension of files in CATIA? So if we want to save a sketcher file, it will be saved with the file name as .cat part as an extension. Part model is also going to save as cat part. Surface model is going to save as a cat part. While assembly file have a twist, it save as a cat product as an extension. While drawing file is taking as a .cat drawing as extension. So the next question is, is it possible to increase the size of plane boundary presentation and how? So basically, if you see, if you open a new part, you will find some default planes in every part file of the CATIA. Yeah. And these are XY plane, YZ plane and ZX plane. Sometimes they are very small and not easily visible or even we can't pick them easily. In that case, we have an option to go in the tools, options, infrastructure. Here, if you see here, infrastructure, then go to the part infrastructure and then go to the tab display. Here, this is axis display size. Now you can just increase through this slider from 20 to 30, 40, whatever you want, and your size will be increased after clicking on the OK. Is it possible to hide a specification tree? Yes, basically sometimes it needs we want to hide this specification tree because there are lots of long names in assembly file and we don't want it to be uh, like that, uh, that our geometry will be behind these long names. So in that case, we can directly press F3. We can go from the view and then uncheck this option specifications. Also, we have an option in settings. Basically, you can go to the tools and then display and then uncheck in the tree appearance, tree show, no show mode. Differentiate between trim and quick trim. So in trim option, we can extend a line along with the trimming of other unnecessary element. While quick trim, we can only trim a line or a curve and can't expand or minimize it. I will show you this through a live example. Here you can see I have some lines. I am going to select the trim options. So this will extend from here to there. And if I just click on the another one, that is also going to extend and will be trimmed by the first one. Okay. Also, you can see this thing here. It is going to be trimmed on that side, whatever I am, whatever the side I am going to click. Okay. But while the quick trim acts differently. So for quick trim, what I can do, I will select the quick trim. And for this complete line, if I click over here, it will remove that much portion. Again, I am doing, if I click on the upper side, it will, it will remove the upper portion uh, till this line. So double clicking over the quick trim will allow me to do it many number of times. So our next question is what is the use of cut part by sketch plane? So I am going to show you this through example one again so here in this part i am going to want to sketch on this middle plane so this is the yz plane and i'm just clicking ok 
if you see i want to sketch here on this surface or somewhere like respective to this one but if i just click on the normal view it is not visible to me in that case i can select the cut part by sketch plane by doing so it is easily visible to me and the body is cut by the sketch plane and you can easily visible this surface and now you can draw whatever you want just click on the normal to surface select any any of the profile making commands and you can make it like that so next question is how do you measure arc length so basically there is a measuring tool which it is used for the measuring different kind of elements points is arc surface volumes i will show you this through one example so here in this part you can see we have some fillets here so i'm going to measure it so it is showing me like it is a radius of 4 mm and the length of 6.145 mm so how will i own this option or i can off this option i can go to the customize option so I need to select the length and that time only the arc is going to be measured arc length basically going to be measured otherwise it will not so if I do it like once again now it is just measuring the radius and diameter and if I want to measure the length I have to click ok uh, on the checkbox on the length apply ok and now you can have the length as well Similarly, if you want to measure uh, any arc, any length, or maybe you don't know that is a arc, or maybe it is a arc, or maybe it is a curve, maybe it is a line. So just click on this option. And if I just click over here, if you think it is a straight line, but no, it is a curve. It has some curve. If I just click on this line, yeah, it is a line. So when something is a straight line, so selection will show automatically it is a line if something is an arc it will show a circular arc or something like that or if it is a curve like here this one it is shown as a curve so i will switch to the this part again and just hide this one again i'm doing so so selecting this you can see here it is a arc in the edge fillet okay so you will see these words so you can identify easily what kind of element you are measuring that is a perfect arc or a curve or a perfect line so the next question is if all of the degrees of, like how do you know about the iso constraints uh, if all the degrees of freedom of a geometry have been taken up by a consistent combination of dimensions and fixed geometry that geometry is said to be the constant one geometry that is still has some degree of freedom is said to be under constraint so like you can see a complete constraint assembly is known at iso constraint and it will be shown in the green while if uh, you see on the right side some under constraint uh, sketch will have some edges in the white color so how do you check this sketch solving status I will show you this option. So this option is available here is case solving option that is inside the tools. Basically it is generally available on the all these cases. If I click over here, you can see it is a under constraint sketch and that's why both the lines are showing as a white. Similarly, the next question is what should be the color code used for the ISO constraint under constraint and over constraint elements if a geometry or a sketch is fully constrained everything is shown in the green color as shown in the left side that is known as iso constrained if something is not fully constrained some elements some lines don't have a specific dimensions with respect to the origin or with respect to their distance that can be shown on the under constraint and in the white color and if some over constraints are given to any element that will be 
comes under the overcrested with the magenta color now the next question is how many dimension are required to constrain a ellipse so generally this is a quick tricky question sometimes people don't know about this but definitely we need to consider uh, first the basically the center of the ellipse we have to provide some values from the origin or from the sketch origin basically so some values here here we have provided then next thing is some angle we have to need and then major and minor axis so these 1 2 3 4 and 5 five dimensions required to constrain the ellipse in a sketch 